Hey guys, welcome to this new video. In this video here, we're going to take a look at how we can do class-wise object counting with YOLO v8. So we're basically going to set up the code. We're going to go through the documentation, see how we can run it in a custom Python script. We're going to take the code snippet and see how it works. So when we're doing class-wise object counting, we're basically just taking a look at a number of different objects. We can even have it within a region, and then we can specify which specific object type we want to detect and also count in that region. So this can be used for a lot of different things. If you want to do something specific, if you're using a ULV8 model out of the box, pre-trained on the Cocoa dataset, where we can detect up to 80 different classes. If you only want to do like car or even person detections, we can specify those class-wise and do class-wise optic counting. So let's just jump straight into the Autolytics documentation. If we go inside our guides tab, we have a bunch of different guys in here and we also have real world projects. You can take the code snippets, take the code examples, use them directly in your own custom applications and projects. If we scroll a bit further down, we can see we have all these different real world projects. Right now, we're going to go inside our optic counting. We already have a video covering like specifically optic counting, but in this video, we're going to see how we can do it class wise so we can determine and specify which of the classes that we want to take a look at and only take those into account when we're counting the objects. So this can be used for if you, for example, want to track a number of different objects, count them. So that could be like if we have a traffic intersection, we only want to like count the number of cars crossing a specific line or an intersection and not taking into account, for example, a person or pedestrians walking around, could also be bicycles, trucks, different types of vehicles and so on. And then we only want to take a look at the car. So there's a bunch of different use cases where we can use this class by optic counting instead of just like standard optic counting. But if you're using like a custom model where you only have specific objects, you can just use that out of the box. We have code examples for all of them. You can read about like what are the advantages of optic counting and so on. And it can be used for like real world computer vision applications and projects. We have some real world applications here for logistics and also agriculture. So this is basically just a conveyor belt where we have packets running on them. And then we just count number of packages crossing this line. So we can count like how many packages are going out. Could also be like coming in. Here we just have an example with fishes which is basically just like swimming in one direction. And then we just count how many are crossing that line or this area here. So we both need to do optic detection, but also apply tracking on top of it. So we actually keep track of like how are they moving from frame to frame. So we can draw like trajectory and check how many are like crossing the line because we can only do that if we have that information and not just doing optic detection on every single frame. If we scroll a bit further down, we can then see we have optic counting using ULV8 example. We both have it for counting in a region, which I mentioned in the start of the video, count in a polygon zone. So it's basically just like an arbitrary number of points that you can define. You can move the polygon zone around and so on. We can also do count in a line, which is basically just crossing a line instead of like counting inside a region or like crossing a line. And we can also have this example for a specific class. So class wise object counting, which we're going to take a look at. So right now we can just go into that. It is just like a few arguments that you need to swap around. With Autolytics, with YOLO V8 that we're going to set up, we only need a few lines of code and we have the whole project up and running. And we kind of like just have the same structure for all of the real projects and you can use them directly on your own. So from Autolytics here, we just need to import YOLO and the object counter and that's pretty much it. We set up our video capture, it can be an arbitrary source. We can specify which of the YOLO models from Autolytics that we want to use, the line points and also the classes to count. So right now we only want to take into account person and the car classes. To be able to determine these indexes, you will need to look at the Coco dataset and all the classes in there. There's basically different types of animals, different types of like large indoor optics, also outdoor, person, pedestrian, bicycle, truck, and so on. We have a video writer here, so we store the results. We can set a bunch of different arguments. You can read more about them further down here. So we can have some different class names, count region colors, like specific colors for the object that we're counting, what types of visualizations and so on we will do. So we have all these optional arguments. And then we also have the arguments for our tracker because we both need to do optic detection and tracking on top of that. But with Ultralytics, we just need to switch out our predict method with track and it's going to take care of all of that for us. We can both use the byte tracker and also but sort and we can specify the different parameters and so on, but we already have videos covering all of that. So definitely check those out. Let's just take this code snippet here. Let's go ahead and take a look at some different videos and see how it runs and just take a look at the results where we do class-wise optic counting with YOLO v8. So right now I've just pasted the code directly into a new 
Python script. We have all the code in here. I've only done a few modifications for a video that we're going to run through. So you only need to specify the line points here. You need to play around with that depending on the resolution of your video and so on, and also where you want to do the counting. And then we also have the classes to count depending on the specific classes do you want to do optic counting for as well. Then the rest will pretty much take care of all of it. We run our tracking. We set up our optic counter down here with the different arguments. Then we just need to specify the width of the path. Right now we're going to take this example where we have like an intersection. Now we can draw a line around here and see how many cars act like crossing this line. We can also count the number of pedestrians going here on the sidewalk. Could even be the bicycles or like scooters who are crossing this line as well. If you just add that class inside of our code as well. So right now I'm just going to open up a new terminal so we can run the program. I'm going to open up a command prompt because I'm using Anaconda. There we go. We just need to type in Python object counting. We run the program. It will take care of all of it. Download the model automatically if you're running this for the first time. Now we can see we have this line. We have object counting. We even have all the trajectories for the tracks and also our cars. So you can actually see this video is only seven seconds, but we are actually able to see all the cars. It does a perfect job at doing the counting. So it starts with a two, three, four, five, and then we'll have six here. We can see all the persons crossing as well. So we have like two persons crossing. These persons are not crossing yet. Let's just run it one more time. Or we can even like try to just only take care of the car. So that will be at two, index two. Let's run again. And now we should only take into account the cars and not the pedestrians on the sidewalk. There we go. Now we can see that we're not detecting these pedestrians over here to the right. I just want to show you we have a bunch of other videos that I can walk you through just to take a look at if we have something specific that we want to detect. So we also have this video here with these bags running on a conveyor belt at an airport. Let's just go in and take the path for that video. And now we need to change the line. We can also specify region and so on. You can take that directly from the documentation. It's basically just the points that we need to change. Right now we can copy the relative path just like that. We can swap out the video. And right now we probably need the line um, a bit further up and we actually need to have a vertical line instead of a horizontal line. So we can count it like on the conveyor belt. So right now here, we probably just need around like 1000 in the, in the X direction. And we kind of like need the exact same one here and then for the Y direction. So that's pretty much down. We need to start at zero and let's just have it here with thousand as well. Let's hope that it goes all the way down to the bottom of our image. So this depends on the image resolution, but you can also use the mouse and so on just to find the point. So here we can see we pretty much just have our line over here. Right now we're detecting like backs, but we're not specifying that inside of our class. We've kind of like just need to move it a bit more to the left. So let's go with 500. Just run it again and let's try to figure out what class the backs are in the Coco data set. There we go. Now we kind of like have that. We just need to specify the class because right now we're only taking into account the car. So right now inside the Autolytics documentation, if we go inside the data sets and then the Coco data set, we can see all the different classes. So we have a person, we have a car. We can also take into account a bicycle, motorcycle, airplane, and so on. Let's try to scroll down and see if we can find a suitcase. There we go. Let's try to see if it is able to detect that. Let's see if we have a back or something closer to it doesn't really seem like so let's just try to go with the suitcase and see how many detections we can get so it's 28 let me just scroll a bit further down 28 there you go and then we just need to specify that so instead of two we have now 28 we can also count the number of people and so on but right now we only have suitcases inside the frame i'm running a program let's try to see if it's able to do it so one two three four here five six so we can pretty much see that it takes all of them. We should probably have to line a bit further over here to the right, but now we can see that it counts every single suitcase coming on this conveyor belt at an airport. So this is a pretty cool use case and application. Again, we only have a few lines of code. You can take it directly, use it on your own. You can go in and specify things. All the classes will come up here at the top. So if they go from the left to the right, it will count this as out. And we can also have the number of counts going in as well. So that's going from right to left. But we can also get all the trajectories here. It does a pretty good job at counting. So this is a really cool use case. So thank you guys for watching this video here. I hope you learned a ton. Definitely go in and check it out. This is really helpful. You only need to specify a few lines of code and then we can have class-wise optic counting, both crossing a line, a region, area, polygon, so on and so on. So definitely check it out. And then I'll just see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.